Well, welcome everybody to CrowingRoosterProphecy.com. This 25th day of uh, June 2023, and that was a piece from Show Me Your Face. Uh, just some upper room spontaneous worship uh, that I enjoy, you know, listening to and uh, hope you enjoyed it too. And so here from Northern California uh, on this Sunday, I hope that you're enjoying hopefully your day off, uh, enjoying your family and maybe uh, your church family today as we celebrate Yeshua and this uh, rest that he has given us. And then, of course, the rest, the eternal rest that is coming and that he promised us. And so there's my cuckoo clock again. <laughs> it's, uh, all right. So just want to share this with you. Something really profound happened uh, this morning that just really... I don't even know what to say other than just to begin to share this with you. This is absolutely off the charts. Now, the Father said something so simple yet so profound this morning out of Psalms 19 that I have never seen before. And you know, that's how it is when we're walking with Yeshua. You know, we think that even after we've been walking with the Lord for many, many years, we think we have it all figured out, but, you know, we find out that we really don't. And uh, I love that, you know, that when we just humble ourselves and walk contritely before him, that uh, we are wowed all the time. And uh, the Father uh, is wowing us again today. And I just want to share this with you. And what he said just is absolutely just captured my heart today and uh, and this is what he said this morning from Psalms 19 he says uh, if my sons and daughters would only look up they would see heaven's champion the victorious bridegroom running his race now let me say this again the father spoke out of Psalms 19 and said this if my sons and daughters would only look up they would see heaven's champion, the victorious bridegroom, running his race. And then the father said this to me, and this was like a double wow <laughs> out of Psalms 19. The father said that Psalms 19 clears up any misunderstanding about my calendar. And so I'm just like, oh, that's a very short statement, but very powerful that Psalms 19 should clear up any misunderstanding about my calendar. And so, you know, I know there's a lot of confusion around the calendar and the timing of the feasts and the beginning of the year and all of that. But the Father is saying that there isn't any confusion. If you'll just simply look up and remember what it says in the Word that we are to look up uh, because your, your redemption is drawing nigh. And so the father is saying that if my sons and daughters would simply look up, uh, they would see heaven's champion and the victorious bridegroom running his race. And so we're going to look at that circuit in that race out of Psalms 19 that is going to give us this powerful revelation today that just, again, I say this often, just rock my world. And so... Here at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com, we've been navigating through the final night watch for 24 months now, and uh, just before the breaking of dawn. And so I wanted to share something with you. Remember I was talking a little bit about intel here at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com and kind of highlighting some of the events that were uh, transpiring in the uh, media and in the, the world concerning events in Russia and Ukraine and all of that. And so I just heard something from heaven that just I felt uh, has a spiritual application that I wanted to share with you. And so uh, I don't know how many of you remember this uh, movie, The Sting, with Paul Newman and Robert Redford, just a classic movie of the greatest con. These two guys are part of a 
a sting operation conning the best cons in the world <laughs> and they come away you know with riches as a result of it and so these gangsters in uh in chicago get played and i feel like what uh heaven is saying is that what happened on the world stage yesterday is that nato got played uh, that NATO was hustled by Prigozhin and, and Putin, who are bosom buddies, really. They've been friends for a long time, and I am thinking that that missing $6 billion that we heard about this week uh, from the Pentagon that suddenly went missing, I think it ended up in Prigozhin's hands, thinking that they uh, had uh, brought Prigozhin over to their side, but uh, I believe that they were played. Uh, you know, America Intel, a con game, got them bitten. <laughs> you know, uh, the best cons they think in the world got played. You know, the cons get played. And uh, I believe that they were played like a fiddle. And so I believe that that's what happened. But here is a spiritual message that I want to share with you from heaven in the application. Is the Father doesn't want the church to be played that the enemy is setting up stings and cons uh, to ensnare and to entrap uh, the church of Yeshua, the bride of, uh, of Yeshua, and that he wants us to be aware of the con game that's being played in this season. And oh my goodness, it is an epic con that is being played and we need to be aware and we need to be conscious uh, and watchful in this hour. And so I want to share this message with you today that the Father is declaring that if my sons and daughters would just only look up, that they would see heaven's champion and they would see the victorious bridegroom running his race. And so this morning, June 26, 2023, high, heaven is highlighting Psalms chapter 19. And so I just want to declare this passage to you. And if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, that's cool. But if not, i uh, just got this highlighted right here for you already. So the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the works of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. And they have no speech that they... Uh, use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. And I thought, speaking of the constellations in the heavens, that God has pitched a tent for the suns, the sun, and it is like, here's the main verse, it is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. This word can also be translated circuit, which uh, really in the original uh, Hebrew language literally means circle, uh, to run his circle, uh, his course, um, his circuit. And so that's what it means. And I think you're kind of getting the picture of what I'm speaking about, that God has placed in the heavens a tent for the sun. And so what I want to do is remind you again of what it says in Luke 21. It says, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. And our Heavenly Father again is saying something so amazing and profound this morning from Psalms 19 that if my sons and daughters would only look up, uh, they would see heaven's champion and the victorious bridegroom running his race. Now what I wanted to show you was this uh, reality uh, right out of uh, the um, Zodiac. And I just want to begin right away by asking you a question. Who created the Zodiac? Who created the constellations in the heavens? I know that there's many in the church that believe Satan did it. <laughs> I believe it or not. Uh, than any reference to the constellations or the heavens uh, to them is taboo. But uh, you know what? Uh, I just want to remind everybody that it was actually Yahweh uh, that created 
the zodiac. He's the one that created the heavens, and he's the one that created the constellation and the sun that rotates day by day, month by month, through the zodiac and through the constellations, month after month, year after year, faithfully and consistently. And so what I wanted to show you is what I've been declaring all year long, that Passover was literally May 5th when the sun was in the constellation of Aries. Now, what is the very first constellation in the zodiac? Can anybody tell me what is the first constellation in the zodiac? It's Aries. Aries is the first Taurus is the second, Gemini, and so forth. And the last, the twelfth constellation in the zodiac that the sun travels through in a year is Pisces. And so here's another verification and confirmation that the church was not celebrating Passover in the proper month. Uh, they don't even call it Passover. They call it uh easter and so when was the church celebrating easter in pisces the 12th month because the sun was in pisces at easter but the sun was in aries at passover and so you see how the church is not looking up if my sons and daughters would only look up and would see heaven's champion and the victorious bridegroom running his race and so I think that what I've declared is that we need to be step in step with heaven in this year. And I've mentioned that many, many times. And so I want to ask you this question. So where is the sun right now? If you looked up into the heavens, where would the sun be? The sun is in the third month here uh, in the zodiac. What is the third constellation? It is Gemini. And where is the sun right now? The sun is in Gemini. But yet a lot of watchmen are saying that we are in the fourth Hebrew month. But it's not true. It's a deception. And they need to make an adjustment that we are truly in the third month. Didn't I uh, tell you that over June 18th, uh, that Ascension Day and Father's Day, and also when Israel arrived at Mount Sinai was the first day of the third month on the 18th of June. And so here out of Psalms 18, it is another confirmation of what I've been declaring this year. And just how simple is this? Why should there be any confusion at all about the calendar? Uh, you know, and I asked Father, you know, what is the problem why is the church struggling so much with this issue with the um with the calendar and i literally heard the lord say this again it's because my sons and daughters will not look up and they will not see heaven's champion the victorious bridegroom running his race and you know the scriptures say that we should fix our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith. And so that is a pretty strong indictment, uh, to say the least, that we say that we have our eyes fixed on him, but the reality is the American church in many ways is not and still living in much confusion even about Passover. And so if you remember exactly what um uh in the passover story if you remember that pontius pilate that he asked the religious leaders you know at jesus's trial uh what do you want me to do with your king and remember the religious leaders response the religious leaders response was we have no king but caesar what a powerful declaration that 1700 years later the church is in many ways still declaring that we have no other king but caesar so because we for 1700 years continue to embrace and to uh celebrate uh uh 
you know, the Emperor Constantine's edicts and uh, decrees uh, all the way back from 321 AD uh, that he became the head of the church and uh, kicked Yeshua to the curb. And we've been celebrating that reality ever since. And Yeshua has been saying in 2023 that if we want to be a part of the true bride of Yeshua that who will be taken in this hour, then we need to be free of leaven. And that's all leaven. And uh, so that's been the challenge this year. And, you know, something very interesting happened to me that I want to share a very personal story with you. I don't know if you, any of you know who Mike uh, Mark Biltz is, but he's a messianic pastor from New Jersey. And uh, of course, he's been uh, last year in the fall during the fall feast that he was declaring that we are in a, a jubilee year. Uh, beginning uh, the the last seven year Shemitah cycle. Now um, I have a little different view on that, but I want to share a personal view and uh, personal experience. Now my view on all that is that this fall is going to begin. The fall feasts are going to begin the final seven year Shemitah cycle, the last seven, and uh, that truly. Uh, the Jubilee year will be 2030. Now, I believe that the tribulation will begin this fall and that uh, at the a Day of Atonement is the beginning of the final seven-year Shemitah cycle and that the Lord will return on Feast of uh, Tabernacles when He tabernacles with us at His second coming. Now, that's my view of things. And so I'll just share that with you. Now, here's the story that I wanted to share with you in the application today. So back last fall, me and my wife, um, we got a, a directive from the Lord that we should share the bridegroom's jubilee. And so we put together a pamphlet, a little flyer, and we felt directed from the Lord that we should go to a number of the churches in our community. And just when people came out of their church service, to just share the bridegroom's jubilee. Now, it was a wonderful, eye-opening experience. Uh, we saw some happy faces, some uh, uh, shocked faces, and some alarmed faces. Like, some people didn't have a clue what we were talking about, talking about the bridegroom and his coming. And some people seemed to be pleasantly surprised, and some actually seemed to be offended. And so... That was kind of how it went. But, you know, the very next day after we did that event, um, I felt that uh, Yeshua asked me that I want you to share the Bridegroom's Jubilee with every pastor that you know and don't know here in Northern California and in Nevada. And so we have often done evangelism outreaches in Nevada. Uh, we have often done uh, events in Reno. And so that's an area that we have sown a lot of seed for the kingdom in here at crowingroosterprophecy.com. And so I sent off a bridegroom's jubilee invitation to 100 pastors. And I enjoyed every moment of it. And uh, so 100 pastors got an invitation to the bridegroom's jubilee. Uh, so on the very next day, I woke up, I think it was Sunday morning, I woke up in the morning and uh, I heard the Lord's voice as I was just enjoying his presence and worshiping him and studying the word. I literally heard Yeshua say to me, son, do you know every one of those 100 pastors that you sent an invitation to, to the bridegroom's jubilee? And I go, yes, uh, I sent those out by your directive. And he said, Every single one of those 100 pastors that you send an invitation to, none of them, not even one, is an intimate friend of mine. And I'm telling you that that so completely shocked me when I heard that and I really haven't completely recovered from that. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't believe that out of the 100 pastors, Yeshua would say that not one is an intimate friend of mine. 
And so just wanted to share that shocking reality and the shocking reality of how simple it is to, uh, for us to understand Yahweh Vahe's uh, feast days and that we need to be aware and conscious of the con game that's being played against the church in this hour. And uh, so we need to be careful, watchful, and we need to make preparation and be humble and contrite of heart in that process in a personal way and endeavor. And so over the next 30 days, we're going to look up uh, and we're going to focus on heaven's champion, our victorious bridegroom running a race. Now, the Holy Spirit reminded me again of the wedding alignment in the heavens on June 18th of 2023. And if you remember, we talked about these three converging events of Ascension Day, of uh, Father's Day, and when Israel uh, arrived at Mount Sinai on the first day of the third month, which was June 18th. And you just had a confirmation of that out of the constellations uh, literally uh, shown to us and depicted in Psalms chapter 19 uh, that when the sun uh, is uh, literally in its position to, to right now, uh, we are witnessing uh, the third month on uh, Yahweh Vahe's calendar. And so we called the bride of Yeshua to make herself ready uh, June 17th and 21st, these five days. And if you remember these, what I'm calling a wedding party, lining up in the heavens, Venus, the moon, sun, Mercury, Uranus, Jupiter, and Saturn. Of course, Leo the lion here looking down at this uh, arriving wedding party is what I called. And so we have Venus, the moon, the sun, Mercury, Uranus, Jupiter, and then also Saturn. You can't see Saturn in this picture, uh, but she was lined up directly behind all of these. And so uh, we have a total of seven, just a perfect alignment of these approaching Leo. Now, so we called the bride to these five days. Now, I got a, an incredible understanding, a deeper understanding. And, you know, I just so often have said to you that, you know, I receive things from heaven and I don't always know exactly the full extent of the meaning and application. But, you know, it's important that all of us, you know, are slow to speak and quick to listen. I want to say that again. The Bible says we should be slow to speak and quick to listen. And we all need to be humble and contrite. And so many, uh, you know, uh, in a very aggressive, uh, antagonistic spirit, you know, um, I guess they have a personal dog in the fight. I don't know what it is, but uh, so quick to speak and so slow to hear that we need to take time to really marinate and to uh, come before the Lord and just uh, listen and receive all that he wants to communicate to us. And I think that so many are so quick to make a judgment. And I think that that is a wrong posture and position before the Lord. And so uh, we are talking about this heavenly alignment that took place during our five-day watch. Now Saturn at the back of the wedding alignment was in the constellation of Aquarius, the water bearer, and was declaring a very powerful message to the watchful bride on June 18th. Now remember the bridegroom comes out of his chamber to run a race that can be seen in the heavens if we only look up. So finally, I got an understanding. Now this 25th day of 2023, that heaven was highlighting a message of the bridal mikvah on June 17th through June 21st. Now what is the bridal mikvah? Now it's a traditional uh, Jewish bridal uh, event. The, a ritual that takes place before the wedding, the bridal mikvah or washing. 
Now we've been calling the bride of Yeshua to make herself ready to wash, to cleanse, to be free of all leaven and false teaching of sin in our lives that we practice and we should be free of those things in this hour. Now, an article to help the bride of Yeshua understand heaven's directive. I have a beautiful article here that you can access. I think I'll put it in the uh, comment section as well. Or you can access it here at crowingroosterprophecy.com. And uh, the bride has made herself ready, right? Revelation 19.7, the mikvah, the washing, cleansing season that we are in. And that's exactly what June 17th and June 21st, those five days, has been all about in preparation of the, uh, the coming bridegroom king for the bride who has made herself ready and so i want to give you this powerful revelation today and this clear understanding out of psalms 19 that should clear up all misunderstanding about the calendar and where we are at on his on yahweh's calendar and so here at crowingroosterprophecy.com we've been navigating this fourth watch uh, through the night just before the break of dawn and so I want to finish by giving you the priestly blessing as I'm a descendant of the tribe of Levi. May the Lord richly bless you. Uh, may he crown your head with glory. May he cause his face to shine upon you so wonderfully, his glory and his presence this day. And so uh, the spirit and the bride cry together even so come lord jesus maranatha